this is a boss katana, and this is a boss katana. These are both boss katanas, and these are the best value in gigging amplifiers, period. <laughs> You've likely seen the Boss Katana before, in fact, you've probably seen it a lot. It is one of the go-to amplifiers for gigging musicians who need to do a lot of small to medium sized gigs. It's reliable, portable, sounds really good, is loud, has lots of excellent sounds and effects built in already. But even though the Boss Katana has been a big success and a lot of people really love it, Boss has decided that it just didn't do everything it needed to do. So they came out with the Mark II. And before I go into some serious detail on both of these amplifiers, I do have to say that I'm back here at Lights Music in Pensacola testing out these two Boss Katana amplifiers. They are both 50 watt single 12 combos. This of course being a Mark I and this being a Mark II. Now what's interesting is this Mark I is actually brand new. I unboxed it for this video. This is the first time that this amplifier has seen the light of day since it left the factory. You can still get Mark I's brand new. And of course they are cheaper than Mark II's as well. And today I'm going to stack up these two amplifiers against each other, see whether it's worth spending a little bit of extra money on a brand new Mark II versus a Mark I. Of course, I'll talk about all of their quirks and features, mic them up, play through them, and give them a Paul score. And for more of my thoughts on the Boss Katana, well, just keep watching this video. Now before I get to the quirks and features of the Boss Katana, I want to talk about what the Boss Katana is and what it is not. The Boss Katana has been called a digital modeling amplifier, it's been called a solid state amplifier, and really it's kind of both of those things. The Boss Katana is doing something that is pretty rare. It's using a Class AB solid state amplifier. Now not to get too technical about the differences between Class A, Class B, Class AB, and Class D. Just know that most of the digital amplifiers you see are using Class D. That is using kind of a hybrid between analog and digital signal, whereas a Class AB is completely analog. The Boss Digital Signal Processing is really taking care of what all the sounds are going to be in here. It is software that is recreating what you would expect to hear out of an amplifier, being run through a solid state power amp that running in Class AB is going to be a little bit more warm and natural than your average Class D amplifier. Okay, now taking a look at the top of the amplifier here, we can see all the various controls, and what I find really interesting about this little dial here to get you the different kinds of amp sounds, you have ones you would expect to see. You have your lead and crunch and clean, but I find it interesting that they put the brown at the very top. Usually lead is gonna be above brown in these kinds of amplifiers, but I guess they think brown has the most gain, so whatever. Now the one that really interests me is the one down here at the bottom. A lot of people think that this acoustic is going to be some sort of acoustic simulation that is going to make your electric guitar sound like an acoustic guitar, when actually it is itself an acoustic amplifier. You can plug in your acoustic guitar in here and use this as an acoustic guitar amp. And of course, if you have an electric that has a piezo pickup in it, you can use it there as well. Next, we have the controls that I'm sure are very familiar to everyone. Gain, volume, bass, middle, and treble. And then over here, we have the effects. Now, the Boss Katana Mark I had 55 built-in effects. The Boss Katana Mark II has more. Now, I do have to clarify something here. While you do have 55 effects to choose from on this amplifier, you can actually only store 15 on the amp itself at any given time. When you go in and select your effects from the Boss Tone Studio, you can choose which ones will actually be on the amp for you to choose from. But you can control them all through these three knobs right here. The first one here is going to be your distortion and modulation effects. So booster being gain and then mod for modulation. Next you come to the delay effects. You have delay and it has a little tap tempo feature here which is really really cool. You can actually set it for varying lengths of delay really quickly and really easily rather than having to fiddle around with a time knob or something like that. And then if you turn it to the right this is where you're going to get your wah and your octave and other various effects that aren't covered under booster, modulation, or delay. And then you have your reverb knob here which again 
is fairly self-explanatory. Now, what's really interesting are these three buttons up here at the top. These are not on-off buttons for the effects. These actually store different settings for your effects. To turn them off, you basically just turn them all the way down. You can see it even says off under each of these potentiometers. Then you come over here and you have your master volume and your power control. You can set the wattage with this power control. Now, I find this really, really strange. We already have over here gain and volume. So essentially acting like a master volume amplifier. Then you have a master volume. Then you can set the wattage, essentially controlling the volume all the way from standby, which is off, up to the full 50 watts of power. So really, if you think about each of these knobs in terms of what their historical meaning is, that's four volume knobs, really. I think that's more than enough, boss. But then just like the effects over here, you can actually save different settings right here with channel one and channel two. Now in the Boss Katana 50, you can store up to four sounds, two per each of these buttons. Now, if you had a Katana 100 or a Katana Artist, you would actually be able to store up to eight different sounds. Coming around to the back of the Katana, we can see more of the things that just make me smile every time I do a review, warnings. And of course, they have to start out by telling you not to throw your Boss Katana in the trash. And down here, they warn you of the risk of electrical shock in various languages. And the only one I can kind of read other than the English is this one that I have to assume is in French, which is, risque de choc électrique ne pas ouvrir. I hope I pronounced that properly. My apologies to anybody who speaks French. But there is an interesting thing on the back of this amplifier, other than these standard certifications and warnings, is up here. This is a Katana 50. But here it says 47 watts. So is it a 47 watt amplifier or a 50 watt amplifier? Where are my three watts, boss? I want my three watts back. And coming back here to some more jacks, this is interesting, you have an auxiliary in, which is a little eighth inch jack that can go in, and you can play MP3 music through this thing. You can basically use it as, well, an aux jack. And then you come to the headphones and recording out, so you can do a line out, do silent recording with this thing. And here you have a USB jack so that you can connect this amplifier to your computer and mess around with the effects in your Boss Tone Studio editor. You can go in and choose which of the 55 effects you are actually going to have in this amplifier that you can affect from the front. So yes, there are 55 different pedals that you can emulate inside of this amplifier. It's just that you don't have access to all 55 at all times. You do have to go and plug this into your computer and actually choose which ones are going to be represented at any given time. Now, granted, it's still an amazing feature, but don't think that you're gonna have 55 pedals at your disposal at all times with this amplifier. Next, we come to the channel selector jack. Now, this is really cool because really this doesn't have two channels. As you saw on the front, it had that channel one and channel two, but it's not like you have a dedicated clean channel and a dedicated dirt channel. No, basically the two channels are whatever you want to set up and complete with effects as well. So you could set one up with a lot of reverb, one up with no reverb whatsoever, and just affect it however you want. But this jack also gives you the capability of plugging in an expression pedal so you can control things like wah as well. Now there is one thing on the back of this amplifier that is missing that I personally would really like to have seen them put in, and that is an effects loop. Now I get that this amplifier has a lot of built-in effects, and that's okay, but sometimes you just wanna run a lot of different effects through these things, and I don't wanna have to run them all through the front. But, eh, well, you give up a little bit in exchange for incredible tone at an incredible price. Next, we come to the speaker in the back of the Boss Katana, and this is a 12-inch speaker that is built by Roland. Roland owns Boss, and it is a 50-watt, 8-ohm speaker. I'm not sure what the deal is with all of these manufacturers putting in speakers that are just at the amp's power rating, but whatever, that's none of my business. Now, there are a lot of people who will swap out these speakers, and it's just as simple as swapping out these little connectors, and then putting your own speaker in if you want to. Now, like a lot of amplifiers in this price range, this is not an entirely plywood amplifier. Most of it is actually MDF, but the baffle is actually plywood. It's just that these sides, bottom, top, they are MDF. Not that that's really a big deal. It's pretty darn sturdy MDF. It's not gonna be going anywhere, but just don't think that you're getting a plywood amp shell. 
But that said, if you're not moving this around a lot, it's gonna hold up just fine. There are a lot of MDF amplifier cases out there and they hold up just perfectly well. I used to have a Randall RG125 from the 1980s. That was mostly MDF and that thing held up for 30 plus years just fine. But MDF is really what you want for this kind of thing anyway because it does keep the weight of the amplifier down. In fact, this is only 25 pounds, which is a far cry from the 50 plus pounds that you're looking at for your average Marshall head or something like that. Next, I wanna take you to the bottom of the Boss Katana amplifier for the final feature that I'm gonna be talking about with this particular amplifier. And that is the built-in stand. Yes, that's right. This has a built-in stand. Now, it's incredibly fiddly. It was really, really hard for me to get this thing actually pulled out the first time I did it, and I was wondering if I was gonna break something. This little thumb wheel on the side does, well, nothing. But this is what it looks like with the stand in the folded away position. And now, this is what it looks like with the stand extended. Yep, really gonna reach the nosebleed section now. Next, I wanna talk about the appearance of the Boss Katana. This is something that I was wondering because I never actually touched it. Uh, this logo looks like it's brushed aluminum, but it is, of course, plastic. I would actually expect that at this price point, but it does look really darn nice. And, of course, the corners are your standard plastic, and this grill cloth is, well, it's pretty nice. It's a black basket weave kind of thing. And the Boss Katana looks nice. It doesn't look like an over-the-top orange or green matte amp or something like that, but, you know, it's understated. It's what it needs to be. But one thing I do find interesting is it does have this gray piping here that only goes on the top and bottom. It didn't do it on the sides like most amplifier cabinets or combo amps would do. I guess it's a cost cutting thing, but I, I don't know, maybe an extra two cents worth of plastic? Next, we come to the Boss Katana Mark II. Now, before I start talking about the various features that have to do with the sound of the Boss Katana Mark II, I wanna show you something on the bottom. No stand. Yeah, Boss realized that that little stand was absolutely useless, so they stopped doing it on the Boss Katana Mark II, which I have to say is a pretty smart decision. And the other thing I wanna point out before we get to the Mark II features is how you can tell the difference just at a glance whether you're looking at a Mark II or a Mark I. And well, that's this right here. These two little Vs in the logo indicate whether or not you're looking at a Boss Katana Mark II or a Mark I. Here we are on the top of the Boss Katana Mark II, and we can see that things are largely the same, but there are some very important differences between this and the Mark I. We'll start over here. You have the same amp settings that were available on the other amplifier, the brown, lead, crunch, clean, and acoustic, but you have a variation switch, so you actually have an alternate sound for each setting, giving you 10 amps instead of just five. Next, I'm going to come to the effects. On the Mark I, it was just single knobs. You would turn left for one effect, right for the other. Here you have concentric pots, so you can actually turn up either or both effects if you would desire. That means that you can actually have five effects on at the same time instead of only three like on the Mark I. And one thing I should have mentioned when I was talking about the Katana Mark I is this panel button right here. Whenever you hit the panel button, it changes the sound to whatever you have these settings on. So maybe you kicked on your channel one or channel two, which was a preset, well you can erase that by hitting panel and it goes back to whatever you've got set right here. And yes, you do see correct. This does have access to more types of stomp boxes. Supposedly this has 65 different stomp boxes that you can do, whereas the Katana Mark I was only 55. But just as with the Katana Mark I, you can actually only have 15 effects on the amp at any given time. Now we're around to the back of the amplifier and I'm just going to go around the differences between this and the Mark I. And the biggest difference is right here power amp in. A lot of people these days are using pedals like the Line 6 Helix LT, which is actually what I use, uh, Kemper Profilers and Axe Effects, those kinds of things, and just need a solid state power amp to blast that sound out to the house. Well, that's what this is doing for you. So now instead of having to go through the front end of the amplifier and getting all the color from the preamp and everything like that, you can just get the pure solid state power amp blasting your sound out to the house with that jack right there. A really good addition. Those are the quirks and features of the Boss Katana Mark I and Mark II amplifiers. Now it's time to mic them up and give them a pulse score. 
Okay, so playing the Boss Katana Mark I. I'll do the Mark II in just a little bit. Now you see that I put on a lights t-shirt. This is again because they were kind enough to let me come here and record and I think the least I can do is put on a t-shirt to help give them a little bit more attention. So this is uh, the Boss Katana Mark I on the Crunch Channel. I have all of the settings set to noon and I have not turned on any of the effects. Also, the master volume is around uh, 10 o'clock and I'd have it in 50 watt mode at the moment. I have grabbed one of these Epiphone inspired by Gibsons. I think this is typical of a lot of the guitars that will be plugged in through this amplifier. I'm not going to do any single coils today just because I want to do a comparison between these two amplifiers and really just kind of go through some of these effects for you. So this is the bridge position. <laughs> Okay, so a nice straightforward rhythm sound. Nice and crunchy, so, well, it is in the crunch setting. So let's hear how much gain is here. Again, this is gain at noon, so let's turn it up. About three o'clock. position. Really, really, really cool sounding. All right, here's how much gain is actually available here in the crunch setting. It's really, really solid. All right, uh, let's just turn the game all the way down and see what happens. Pretty clean, but also pretty darn quiet. Uh, let's bring that back up to... All right, uh, that's at about uh, 11 o'clock. So now the volume knob. Now let's just see how much volume we can get out of this thing. Again, I'm wearing hearing protection right now. Uh, just don't have my normal headphones on. Okay. This is with the master volume cranked. Uh, channel volume is still at three o'clock. Gain is at about 11 o'clock. <laughs> bad actually what really impresses me about the katana is just how much it cleans up with the rolling of just the volume knob on the guitar something that you didn't get out of digital amplifiers a long time ago okay so I'm gonna bring that volume on the channel back. I'm gonna bring that back to about 11 o'clock as well. Bring the master back down to about 10 o'clock. I'm gonna go up to the lead sound. This is the lead sound. Very, very, very cool. Bring the gain up to about three o'clock.
Wow. You know, I'm, uh, I'm always surprised whenever an amplifier that has digital modeling cleans up so well with the guitar's volume knob. But uh, they did a really good job. All right, so now this is up to brown, keeping everything else the same. <laughs> Liquidy. And it still cleans up reasonably well with the volume knob. Um, okay, going down, clean sound. I'll put the gain back to noon, bring the channel volume up a bit. I'm gonna scoop out some of the mids. Uh, sounds like I got plenty of low end already, but I wanna bring out the treble just a little bit. Okay, and there we go. Middle position. Nice clean sound. And just for completeness sake, here is this electric guitar in acoustic mode. Not bad. Clean. Acoustic. Well, we'll just plug in an acoustic guitar in a few minutes and see how it sounds. So now I'm back in crunch and I'm going to change the wattage. We are in 50 watt mode right now. Down to 25. Didn't expect it to change the tone that dramatically, but. Here's half watt. <laughs> okay. Uh, just about gone, just about disappeared. Um, boy, half wise totally for practice. And of course, standby, nothing. All right, so effect. So I'm gonna stay in clean mode for this. And turn it booster. So it sounds just exactly like that. It sounds like a booster. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to crunch so that, uh, you know, like a tube screamer, I'm actually pushing the front end of a crunching amp. Cool. Great, 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 great boost feature. Okay, so now over in the modulation. We have a flange that will change the speed as the knob goes up. I was expecting it to change the depth. That's really cool. All right, so we'll turn that off. We'll go into delay. Interesting, so they have delay affecting the volume, but modulation affecting the speed. Well, whatever. Thank you. 
nice rich tremolo. All right, let's hear the reverb. So I've grabbed a Yamaha acoustic, has a little built-in preamp, a piezo pickup, and we're gonna see how this thing sounds through the acoustic channel. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, that's with the gain at about one, volume one, bass one o'clock, middle 11, treble 11 o'clock, and master volume setting. Uh, about 11 o'clock, so. Just out of curiosity, what happens if I turn it to clean? What about crunch? What about lead? What about brown? Let's just plug the Mark II in. So now we're on the Mark II. I have the settings exactly the same as last time. Crunch, gain at noon, volume at noon, Master is at about 10 o'clock, set to 50 watts. So this will be your A-B test right here. Okay, so a nice straightforward rhythm sound. So we're gonna dial that back a bit and get a sound, because, okay, I don't know if you're hearing what I'm hearing, but the Mark I sounded uh, deeper to me. So I'm actually gonna back off on the treble here, still in crunch. I was not expecting that. All right, let's hear it in the uh, lead again, everything. down to clean, see if this is. You know, even with the treble backed off, it's still, hmm. Bring the bass up. Back off in the mids. Bass up a little bit. Back to crunch. Look how that sounds. That's a bass is at about one o'clock, mids drop back to about 11, and treble drop back to about 10 and a half in crunch mode. So let's turn the booster up here. Here 
it still cleans up really nicely. Well, it really does. Lead. Brown. That's really impressive how clean that stays. Okay, effects. Mod. Nice rota vibe. Nice roto vibe. Okay. Effects. Oh, octave. Okay. Sounds so good. All right, uh, back to crunch. 50 watt. Stand by, obviously. 25. And here's how it sounds cranked. Half watt. And for kicks and grins, we're gonna go ahead and hear what this sounds like in the acoustic mode. So now let's check out the different variations. So you can see here there was a variation knob lit up. Now I'm gonna press it and see what the difference is between the sounds with it off and on. So right now it is lit up. We are in the crunch mode. Again, everything is Unity. Uh, the master volume is set to about 10 o'clock. Variation. So this is with it off, on, off. So this is lead with it on, off. I expect it to sound that different. Okay, brown with variation on. Off. Really different, wow. Okay, down to clean. Clean with it on. Clean with it off. On, off, crunch, off, crunch on, lead off, lead on, brown off, brown on, huh, shockingly different. Okay, so, oh, acoustic. Let's put it on, acoustic off. Hmm. 
Now here is the Mark II in acoustic mode, and I have the master volume set to 11 o'clock. I have the bass turned up to about one o'clock, middle and treble are set to unity. The channel, gain, and volume are both set to one o'clock. And here's the variation mode. Variation off. Sounds really good. Which do you like better? Mark one or mark two? Time now for the Paul score. And as always, I'll start in the living room category. As for styling, the Boss Katanas aren't what you call eye-catching or beautiful, but rather serviceable. So I'll give them a six out of 10. In the tone category, I really think these amps sound good. And since they're solid state slash digital, they can maintain that tone at low volumes. But as good as they are, and they are really, really good, especially clean, they just can't compete with tone monsters like the Mad Amp Mini Mat or the Mesa Boogie Mark V when the gain gets cranked. And I admit, I do slightly prefer the sound of the Katana Mark I, so I'm giving the Mark I an 8 and the Mark II a 7. In the reliability category, the Boss Katana is robust and sturdy, and there is no universe in which these don't get a 10. As for the fun factor, these amps are a lot of fun to play, but a lack of an effects loop on either one means running any extra pedals through the front if you don't want to stick with the sounds they give you. But they both have an aux jack for jamming along with MP3s, have a multitude of effects to choose from internally, and they both get a 9. As for the cool factor, you see these amps everywhere. They aren't unique, but they do signify that you are a smart gearhead and you know a good buy when you see one. The Mark II edges out the Mark I because it is the new version with more bells and whistles, so I'll give the Mark II a 6 and the Mark I a 5, bringing the living room score to 38 for both amps. Meaning that while I do love these amplifiers as bedroom amplifiers, you can see here how they stack up against other amplifiers. And yeah, all the ones ahead of them are tube amps with the exception of the Retro Channel RR1, which I believe is the best sounding solid state amplifier of all time. And the Blackstar Fly 3, which is a little tiny portable amp that sounds phenomenal that you can walk around with as you're playing, which that's just darn cool. But I think that the Boss Katanas have shown very respectably in the living room category. As for the stage score, this is where the features are super helpful. They make excellent pedal platforms in addition to the pedals built in, but I'm giving the edge to the Mark II because it has that power amp input in the back, and you can run more simultaneous effects through it. But again, that missing effects loop does hurt these amps, so I can't give either a perfect score. And no, that little stand built into the Mark I doesn't help at all. The Mark II gets a 9, the Mark I gets an 8. As for volume, these amps are reasonably loud, and certainly the 100 watt versions are even more impressive, but they don't get to the ear bleeding volume the very loudest amps can attain, so they both get an 8. As for practicality, these are light, feature rich amps that are loud enough for a vast majority of situations, and you will never have to replace tubes ever, so they both get a 10 out of 10. As for quality, they are robust, extremely hardy amps, but a plywood instead of MDF chassis would make them nearly indestructible, and they don't have quite the fit and finish of a boutique amp, so they both get knocked down to a 9 out of 10. As for value, I simply don't see any other amplifier in existence being as good of a value as the Boss Katana. You will not find the qualities it has in any other amplifier in the price range period. They both get a 10 out of 10, bringing the stage score to 45 for the Mark I and 46 for the Mark II. This brings the total Paul score to 84 out of 100 for the Boss Katana Mark II and 83 out of 100 for the Mark I. There are only two amps I've ever played that are higher on the list, the Mesa Boogie Mark V combo and the Chariotone AH-50. There are amps that sound better, amps that look better, and amps that have more features, but you have to spend serious money to get there. There simply is no better value for the money in a gigging amplifier or a bedroom amplifier than the Boss Katana ever made.